Hello, my name is Mike Tolte and I work at Microsoft in the UK. And this is one of a number of videos around a technology called PRISM, sometimes known as the Composite Application Guidance. This comes from the Microsoft Patterns and Practices team and largely targets building Silverlight and WPF applications. But you can use some of the techniques and the pieces delivered outside of those spaces. So you kind of get two things with PRISM, you get some documentation and you get some libraries in the form of source code that you can build up for WPF or Silverlight and as I say you don't have to use these inside of those kinds of applications but some of the technologies in PRISM are specific for UI work with these two technologies. PRISM has a friend called Unity which is another framework and we'll talk about that as well in these videos and in terms of finding these things if you want to find PRISM and so on if you just pop to a, a search engine type in PRISM and CodePlex and you'll find PRISM if you want to find Unity, type in Unity in Coplex and you'll find Unity. If you want to find these videos, you can go to channel9msdn.com slash niners slash mtolte, that's me, and I'll put these videos on this site here. If you want to find me, you can go to mtolte.com, that's my blog, and you'll find it there. If you want to find me on Twitter, you can go to twitter.com slash mtolte, and you can find me on there as well. And if you want to find me on email, I'm just mtolte at microsoft.com. Okay, so here we are in video 9, and what I want to do, of course, is follow on from what we did video 8. Now, by video 8, what we got was an application of sorts, and it's composed of modules, and those modules, in our case, correspond to separate zap files for Silverlight. We've done that with Prism, that's one of the things we can do. Those modules contribute services and there is a mechanism for discovering those services which is largely powered by unity makes that work and they also contribute UI and we tried to build our UI as following this sort of um, view view model model pattern or MVVM if you if rearrange those letters in the right way and they contribute UI by being dynamic and contributing into regions managed by a region manager so we've done all that stuff and then we also took a look at how when we're building composite applications like this out of loosely coupled components that come together in these sort of modules how these things start to speak to each other whilst remaining loosely coupled and we looked at a few different ways of doing that we looked at shared services so the idea that a module contributes a service and so a number of different views and view models can find that service and for instance synchronize events off it so that's one way pretty simple way of communicating across these pieces of software. We also looked at sort of the loosely coupled event aggregation service that Prism offers. So it's a Prism service there. And how we could fire an event across to another piece of software that didn't really know anything about the originator of the event. So that's quite a, a nice powerful thing to be able to do. What we'll do in this video is just very quickly look at one more possibility for communication. In the same way that in Silverlight or WPF, you're probably used to the idea that if you have, say, uh, let's just sketch this here, if you had a grid and there's a button in the grid, you're probably used to the idea of having a, a data context on each of these controls. There's a data context here and there's a data context there. And what normally happens is if the button wants to data bind something that can't find something in its context, it goes to its parent to see if it can find it there. And that's kind of how that works. Now that's great if everything's in a single UI tree, but of course if you're dynamically injecting views into regions, you probably don't know what's in the rest of the tree, so this doesn't kind of work. Also in the code we've written so far, we've used our data context as a way of specifying the view model for a view, so our data context is kind of used up. So what PRISM has is another concept which it calls a region context and we'll look at that here and essentially the idea is if you've got a parent region it can have a region context which is just an object, you know, a slot to put something and any child regions can also have one of those and pick up the parent one as well so they can grab that parent one and similarly if we have another child region they can pick that up so again this is a service that's provided by the region manager and it's provided between parent regions and child, child regions just to get that right and essentially it provides a slot where you can put any object you like to be shared across those things so it's another way of sharing things between uh, views 
without explicitly building knowledge into those views of where that thing comes from. All right, so let's shut down Notepad and let's go back to our sample that we're playing with. Let me just spin that up. And we need to kind of patch this up so that uh, it stops doing what it was doing at the end of the last video. Let me just full screen Visual Studio. So at the end of the last video, we'd introduced this idea that there was a text changed event, this guy here. I'm going to get rid of this now so we no longer have a text changed event. We're going backwards in some ways at the moment. And then what we'd done in a particular view model down here, I think, we were using the event aggregator service. I'm going to take that away. We don't need that anymore. We're not going to use that in this particular video. And when somebody changed the text in this particular view, we were using that text changed event and publishing one of those. And we we're not going to do that anymore either. So let's get rid of uh, that. That fixes that view model for me. Let me just go to my other two view models. Again, this one was using the event aggregator service. It was syncing up to a particular event. We'll leave the function that fires the change notification, but it no longer has anything to do with that event aggregator service. And finally, we have another view in another module altogether, which was doing the same thing. So it was syncing up to the event aggregator service. It was getting hold of it and subscribing to that event and then using that to fire its own property change notification. Let's rebuild. Okay, so just a quick review of what we have. We have our interfaces project, which has I text service, get text and set text. That's pretty simple. We have an implementation of that in one module in text service. We have a lump of text that starts off as hello world. That's just in a private field. You can call get text and we will return you that text. You can call set text. We'll take your new value, store it. And we also have a custom event. It's not I notify property change it could equally well be but it's not it's called text change and it fires that whenever the text changes that's it and it expects that you will call get text to find out what the new text is we have an implementation of that we then have um, I guess starting at the other end a shell and the shell at the moment is a grid with an items control called list region and a content control called main region let's close that down Going back over to our other modules, we have two views in this module, and there's not really much to them. Um, one's orange, it has a text block which is bound to a property called text, and it has a button which fires the change text command. We looked at this in previous videos. That one allows things to be changed. We have another view here which is simply bound to the text, and it happens to be green. We have the view models that sit behind those things. So the first view model takes the text service as uh, something it's dependent upon, has a property called text that can be bound to, also has the change text command. And when that command is executed from the UI declaratively, this function here runs. We use the text service to change the text and we fire our own property change on our text property. We don't at the moment have any way of telling any other views that the text has changed. Let's just take a look at our other two views quickly. Um, model, the view model for view 2 just takes the text service and it has a property that can return the length of the text. So instead of returning the text, the, the idea here is to present a different view, albeit a very simple different view, we return the length of the text. Again, it has no way right now of knowing when that text changes in the underlying text service. And finally, in our other module down here, the view model takes the text service, has a property called text that returns the piece of text prior to any space in the text. So again, just trying to present a, a slightly different view. And so at the moment, if we run this back up, so just press F5 in here. Then what we've got is our various different views. This is the view that shows the whole string. This is the view that shows just the first word. This is the view that shows the length. And when we change the text, nothing's going to really happen other than our one view updates because it knows um, that there's a property change notification there. The text has changed in the underlying service, but 
none of these two other views know anything about it because we've not got any communication mechanism. So let's go and put a communication mechanism back here, which is kind of the point of the, uh, the video. Okay, so the way that these region contexts work, we kind of need to have a, a parent region for the two regions we've already got. So let's just make this simple by putting this into a, an items control. And we'll just specify that it's regions, region manager dot region name is, let's say, parent region. So he's now parenting these other two regions. Let's just go and drop that down there and let's get rid of that. Okay, great. Now we can give this a region context straight away if we want to. So we can say regions, region manager dot region context equals, let's say, initial value, something like that. Now, we could put, we could data bind this, by the way, and we could put an arbitrarily complex object in there, one that has, for instance, property change notification on it. We won't do that here. We'll keep it simpler than that, but we could do that. So we've now got this region context on our parent region. Let's go to our views and start to play with that a little bit. Okay, so let's go to the first view that we have. Go to the view model behind it. And in this view model, I now want the region manager. So let's get injected the I region manager. Call that region manager. And we'll put a member variable on to store that in case we want to keep it. And we'll just set that at construction time up here. So let's say this dot region manager equals region manager. Okay, so what we'll do is for our text property here, instead of using the text service, let's use the region manager. So we're actually going to forget the text service for now. Let's go and return region manager, regions, parent region, context, let's say as string. So it's a bit hacky, but we're going to reach into that region manager, get its context as a string. And this is from our, our region that we've got here. Now, when somebody comes along and executes the change text command here into this function, instead of using the text service, let's go and say region manager, regions, parent region, context equals new text. So we just change it. And we're also going to fire our property change notification so that any data bound view will get the new text by calling back into the region manager and getting it. So that kind of works for where we are here. And in fact, we don't really need the text service anymore because we're just working with the region manager. So let's get rid of the text service for now. We pretend we don't need that anymore. And so we don't need this guy down here anymore either. OK, great. So that's one view. Our other two views are much simpler, so in our other two views, here's the view model for our other view. It no longer needs the text service either, so let's just take a region manager here. Um, really, the reason why my service is going away is because my service only stores a string. If I had a real service, this wouldn't happen, but because we're only storing a string and we're now storing it in the region context, the text service becomes a bit redundant, really. But that's just because of the ridiculous nature of my example here. So let's go and take uh, a region manager. We'll store it. In fact, we probably don't need to store it, so let's, let's just um, not store that for the minute. Let's say at construction time, here, region manager dot regions. And then we want to say uh, parent region, oops, excuse me, dot, and then we want to say property changed, plus equals, let's just put a uh, event handler onto that. And we'll just say here, if e dot property name equals context, that's the property we're interested in, then we basically need to fire this piece of functionality down here. So I suppose what we could do is just... Um, swipe that. So let's put an and onto this condition here. Let's say and property changed is not equal to null. Then we fire our own property change callback. Great. Oops, excuse me. Just did a page down when I didn't mean to. Let's fix that tab that we just injected up here by mistake. Okay, great. So we're just saying that when the parent region's context changes, that affects us and we fire a property change for our text. And I've broken some braces somewhere here, uh, like so, I think. So we don't need this function anymore. And our text property actually becomes, let's say, string text equals 
region manager oh, I did need to keep that region manager didn't I let's keep it around let's call that region manager let's go and set that at construction time okay great and then we'll say the text equals region manager dot context sorry regions called a parent region dot context as string and then we'll just return text dot length I think was what we were returning here so quick build and let's just go and fix our last view which is in a different module so we go to this view model we don't need the text service anymore we take the i region manager this is going to be exactly the same code as we just had a second ago so uh, nothing exciting happening there let's just keep that guy this dot region manager equals region manager and then we want to sync the change event again region manager dot regions parent region dot property change plus equals this produces and we go and fire that event here as well let's just do that and then our text property becomes once again a matter of you can see that clearly keeping these as strings is a bad idea I'd want to put these in some resources somewhere because um, or at least some constants so that I don't type them wrong but um, let's just say that we want to get the context as a string and then we just return text.split okay so if we rebuild what we should have done now is we've actually taken away our text service as an underlying service for the different modules to store a string and what we've now done is put that string into a region context and just use that to store the string so you can see there's the initial value which is of length 13 and with the first word of that is initial and if we change this to something else we should see that change this is reflected up there change is reflected here in 11 which is apparently the length of change this let's just do that you get the idea as to how that's working so the essential idea here is that we have in our shell regions that are parented by another region that region can have a region context and so within the views that are injected into these regions we can actually find the local or the parent region context pick it up and use that as a way of sharing things between those um, different views that we've got in our case I actually tried to make sure that we did our work in the view model code dependent upon a region manager and not by putting the code into the views um, just to sort of restate that, there is an easier way of getting to your region context if you're writing code inside of a view. So here is an actual view, and what you can call there is there's a static function called region context dot get me an observable context of a particular type. So you can just get an observable context. Now that's kind of easier, but you have to pass a view in order to be able to call that function, which means that you kind of need to be writing code in the view or you at least need to know about which view you're coding for so I found that a little bit more um, I find that a little bit less useful because it, it means more code into the view um, which means less code that you can easily test so for me that's why I kinda went down this road of um, using this kind of method of grabbing the context and um, and sort of working that way really rather than um, than going down that route of putting code into the view itself we put all our code into the view model but be aware that there is that other way of getting to um, the context and change notifications on it via that method region context dot let me just put it in again region context dot get observable context that's another way of doing a similar thing okay let's just pop that down